Welcome to LSC. It's sports time. I'm your host, Bob Hens. Today I have with me former Hampton administrator, Bobby Croft. Now, Bob and I have been knowing each other for years and years. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate being here. Uh, let's go back when you started, because you didn't grow up on the peninsula. You came in as, uh, in junior high school. Your dad was in the military. Mm -hmm. I was a military brat. <laughs> Air Force. It, but it was Air Force, but it was a little different than m most people grow up in the same neighborhood. You had to uh, move around until you got here and then stayed. I can't figure it out. I, I moved here when I was uh, 12 years old. I was in the eighth grade at Buck Road Junior High School. and. Uh, just seems like uh, we got here and we found roots and we found ways, my father found ways to uh, remain at Langley, so that's where we have, uh, we've stayed. Well, he ended up retiring then at, Lang from Lang at Langley? He retired from Langley in uh, 1966, long time ago. Right. And uh, of course, I was out of high school and out of college and teaching then, but right. uh, the last years that he was at Langley, uh, I was uh, went to Buck Road Junior High School, eighth and ninth grade. Right, and who was your coach out there? Uh, <laughs> Joe Beck. <laughs> Joe Beck. Joe Beck was my basketball coach, and uh, it's of course Buck Road's an empty field out there now. Yeah, well, I spent a few a few uh, moments out of Buck Road. Uh, then you go to Hampton High School, and you're playing for a pretty good uh, basketball coach over there, Mike Anastasio. Mike Anastasio was uh, my basketball coach. Thought the world of him. He's a good man and uh, played uh, all three years there. Uh, do you remember some of the teammates that you had on your team? Oh, gosh, uh, Frank Allison, uh, Billy Canapa. Uh, um, gosh, I can't remember. Well, why. that's okay. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. But while you were over there, you just didn't play uh, basketball. You also became a pole vaulter. And, and who taught you to pole vault? Well, the other pole vaulter and myself taught each other. We coached <laughs> each other. There was nobody over there to coach us, but I was always fascinated with pole vaulting. Right. And uh, well, you got, have to develop tremendous strength in the upper arms up, and shoulders. Upper, upper body strength, yeah. arms and shoulders, and you had to have some speed. Right. And back then, uh, we didn't have the fiberglass poles that the guys have now. We they didn't bend, did they? No, not at all. Swedish steel doesn't bend very much, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was fascinated by it, and I started, and uh, the other pole vaulter, Kenny Test, uh, who was a good <coughs> friend of mine also, uh, we, we, we got out there, and we didn't land in the foam rubber pits like they've got now, um, and we didn't, have, we didn't have sawdust. We had wood chips. Oh, my. So when we would land on our back <laughs> in the pit... <laughs> And this is the truth. We would go home every night with scratches on our back oh, that we I, would, we'd have to put Mercurochrome on. <laughs> wow. And, you know, you know, but to do this as a youngster, just for some reason, you just, it, it fascinated you. It just fascinates me that nobody coached you, that you, can, you and your, the other povo just kind of learned this on your own. That's, to we, me, is amazing. We started on working on timing. Right. For swinging on the pole to get your your uh, body ab above your shoulders. Right. Your hips above your shoulders. And we started on the rope in the gymnasium. Oh, okay. And the rope would hang per uh, perpendicular, and we would run, grab the rope with speed, and then with the swinging of the rope is the same action as swinging as the pole starts up. Uh, see, and I wouldn't have thought that. Yes. That, that, that and was so just... that's when we learned to lean back, kick our feet up in the air, and pull. All right. So now you, you uh, two sports, then you go Old Dominion, uh -huh. and you become a three-sport athlete. <laughs> well, God blessed me with a little, <laughs> little, little, little talent. Yeah. So you play basketball, you pole vaulted, and then you did. Then I went to Old Dominion and became a springboard diver. <laughs> and see, then to me is just is, is is there anything in the pole vaulting that that helps with this body control? There it's, you go. And that's uh, it's it's actually you can go back to gymnastic abilities. Okay. Because with pole vaulting, it's it's body control. With right. springboard diving, it's all timing and body control. Right. And. Uh, 
that's yeah. I, I enjoyed doing it. Had so a great you, time. So you go over to over to Golden Man. You play basketball. You pole vault. Not, I didn't pull. I didn't play oh, basketball. Pole vault, but you, you uh, uh, springboard diver. Springboard diver. And then you play golf. I played on the golf team. <laughs> I was I was a three sport athlete at at Old Dominion, and uh, then where did you come up with golf? Because you didn't play at the high school. I learned that through the military, being okay. around military installations, those facilities, golf courses were there. Right. And I played a lot of baseball when I was a kid. I didn't play high school or, right. or college ball, but I played a lot of baseball. That was actually my best sport. But uh, I, I took a, a baseball swing and converted it to a golf swing <laughs> and uh, got pretty good at it and enjoyed it. Right. And uh, I was very diligent. Anything, any sport that I played, I wanted to be the best that I could be. Who was, who was basketball coach when you were over there, Bobby? At uh, oh, Old Dominion. Bud Matheny. Bud Matheny. He was the basketball coach. Okay, because he became more, known more for his baseball. Well, he was, he was primarily the baseball well, coach. Right. But remember, Old Dominion way back then was small. And they didn't have a huge coaching staff. Right. So Scrap Chandler, Joseph C., yeah. uh, Scrap was his nickname. He was the swimming coach, and soon as and everybody when they go in as a freshman, they take a swimming test. And soon as I finished the swimming test, I was bouncing around on the board, and he walks over to me, and I don't even I don't know the man from Adam, and he says, "You're on the swimming team." I said, "Yes." <laughs> I said, "Yes, sir." <laughs> Not why or who are you, no. but yes, sir. He says, "You're on the swimming team." I said, "Okay." So uh, I sort of had early aspirations of maybe playing basketball. Okay. But uh, he, he uh, drafted me right onto the swimming team, and I was on the swimming team for four years. How about that? And had a great time. Uh, All right. So then you graduate. You got a health and physical education degree. Uh -huh. And you, you come over back home. Uh -huh. Back to Hampton. And uh, do your student teaching that? Kickatan, the first year that Kickatan is open in 1963-64. Right. So you're over there as a, as a student teaching, mm -hmm. graduate in the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. After my student teaching. After your student teaching. That was a scheduling problem. I had to wait till the next fall before I could be scheduled for student teaching. Right. And then I stayed there uh, the rest of that year uh, uh, substituting. I was almost what you would consider a permanent sub right. because I had... I, they could call me any time and I, I could be there. Right. So I was there and then came back the following year, 60, school year 64, 65. Uh, I signed a contract to teach biology and, uh, and teach biology and physical education. Right. And so, who was the principal over there then? Ed, uh, Mr. Ed Zatella. So, yeah. And you had uh, some, you grew up with him at Hampton, didn't you? He was, when I was in high school, he was my assistant principal. Yeah. <laughs> and what you, I can remember, this is going back, but you talking about something about his steely eyes. <laughs> steely blues. Uh, any, anybody that went to Hampton High School back during uh, the 50s and, and early 60s, uh, you didn't want Mr. Zatella to look at you. <laughs> If you were in the hallway at your locker, you just hoped he walked on by. <laughs> but, but he was he was he was a great man and he yeah. still is. Yeah. And I had all the respect in the world for that man and uh, a lot of times and I'll be very honest with you Bobby, a lot of times when I was making decisions as a building administrator, uh, I sometimes I would ask myself, what would Mr. Zatella do? Okay. And I, to me, he he didn't realize it, but he was a mentor for me. Had a lot of influence. On I him. had a tremendous respect for that man, and still do. Well, and and it evidently started when you were when you were at Hampton High School, yep. and for some reason, what he did just kind of stuck with you. So you became an administrator. Man, this guy was good. Well, he was great. He was a great yeah. administrator. Because, see, I worked for him as a teacher right. also at Kickatan. And I'm here to tell you, uh, he ran a tight ship. I bet he did. Uh, so now you're at your Kickatan. You were at four years. Four years at Kickatan. And uh, I, I, I was coaching. I was teaching and coaching there. And the first year that I was there, I requested... Uh, the school board to allow me to start a swimming, swimming program. program. So I started interscholastic swimming on the peninsula for the high school kids in 1964-65.
So you brought over some of your expertise that you got from uh, Old from, Dominion. From Old Dominion, and uh, we swam uh, at the Hampton Uni University pool. Right. Uh, the gentleman down there allowed us two days a week, uh, one hour on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and two hours on Saturday morning. And uh, that's where we practiced and had our, our swim meets. Now the swim meets, the people that we swam were Norfolk schools because there were no, no. other Peninsula teams, okay. schools, had a, had a swimming team. So we swam against uh, the Norfolk schools. Didn't do real well, but we at least uh, generated some interest. Okay. And uh, well, the rest is history because yeah. everybody on the Peninsula yeah. now has, swim, swim team. has swim teams. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now you, you've started a swim team, you've been at uh, Kickatan, but then they open up Pembroke and they need a basketball coach. Who do they call on? Well, I, <laughs> there, was, there was a whole lot of things happening back then and at that particular time I was, uh, I was the junior varsity basketball coach at Kickatan right. while Mr. Zatella was still there. And he asked me if I would be interested because he knew what was going to be happening the following year. And that was 1968, 69. Right. So he asked me uh, the previous spring, would I be interested in going with him because they were going to, he had been appointed principal of Pembroke. Right. And he asked me if I would go over and take the basketball program over there. And of course, yes, I, I said, of course I would. I would love to. And uh, you go anywhere with the band, would you? <laughs> I, I'd, I'd follow him anywhere in the world. So we went over there, and we had a we had a pretty successful program right. o over there. Name some of those ball players that you had over there. Oh gosh, the first year we were there, we had Talafera, George Talafera. We had Bubba Small, uh, Clarence Young, Eddie Green. Uh, uh, Kenny Johnson, who was a 10th grader, right. who turned out to be uh, over a thousand point scorer yeah, in three years, not four years like they've got now, yeah, yeah. but in three years he scored uh, almost 1,200 points. Right. Uh, had, a, I'd say, about a 27, 28 point average per game. Right. And he was, he was, oh, he was, we never had anybody over 6'2 at yeah. Pembroke. Tallest kids we had were were six two. And that's probably Bobby Blizzard. I uh, mean uh, David Blizzard. David Blizzard. I'm Bobby. Bobby. That's his that's son. That's his son. <laughs> yeah. David Blizzard uh, was a year behind those guys, uh, and along with along with that first group was Larry Moore. Right. And then Blizzard came came up with them the following year. So we had we had still had Kenny and Larry, and uh, and Blizzard. And uh, Joe Bass came yeah, onto the scene, and he was an, he was a very integral part of our program. Yeah. He was uh, he 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 could do it. <laughs> he, he could do it. Yeah, but you know that that you know you go back and you start thinking about some of the, the ball players you had. It's kind of neat to and to see where they have ended up and uh, and all. But you you had a, a lot of going for you. But then you decided make another move and go into administration. Well, was that we, a hard move for you to make? Or? It really was, Bobby. But you know, in education, uh, if you're young and want to, you know, improve your financial status, well, you've got to prepare yourself and and move as best you can right. into administration. And uh, I became an assistant principal in school year '72. I worked four years as the basketball coach at, at Pembroke. Right. And the last game that uh, I coached was against you when you were the. I wasn't going to bring it up. I, I bring it up, and that's okay. Uh, was the last game that I coached at Pembroke was against Bethel when you were coaching there, and you Tico Winder and the guys just, you know, you, you beat us. Well, we not by much. One of, one of the few we yeah. won anyway. <laughs> But uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. But where did you go as your first assistant principal? I went to Bethel High School. Oh, I was over there. Yes, then. you were. You were, <laughs> you were Dean of Boys. Yeah, right. But now you go over there, you're doing activities and athletics. Uh -huh. And now what does that involve? Because other assistant principals do other things. Well, you, you're athletic director and you're director of student activities. Right. Uh, answers to one administrator in the building. And I was that administrator. Okay. And uh, I worked with, well, when I first went there, Blue Early. Jim right. Early was, uh, right. 
was uh, the athletic director. Right. And uh, uh, Mike Talaski was director of student activities right. at the time. So I helped co coordinate their programs and worked with them to get their budgets through uh, for whatever they needed to operate their so, budgets with. So being a coach, now you're looking at what happens to help fund that program that you're coaching. That's right. So you're, you're looking at the other side of the coin, but still were you able to use, okay, I know what coaches need, and that uh, was that help, helpful? That's very helpful, and I think, uh, I think that's a real problem they have these days, that they've got people doing these jobs that, that don't know what's necessary to get done right. for those people as to what they need. Right. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. I, I was, I was uh, an assistant principal for, Oh, 24, 25 years. Right. And but, but see, you didn't always do athletics and activities. No. You went back over to Kickatan. Uh, five years later, I went back to Kickatan. But let's, let's mention one other thing first. Before sure. I left Bethel, I had the summer school program as well. That's right. Oh, and man, this is... <laughs> now, the summer school program was great when I first went into it. Bucky Tillery was... Uh, summer school principal director right. and uh, he had an opportunity to leave and go t uh, to another part of the state as a to, principal at, to Appomattox High School as a, yeah. as a principal and Dr. Lyles who was in charge of instruction for the city at the time asked me if I would take over the summer program and I accepted and it was it was fine the first year uh, we were on everything was on semester but that's, oh, when, wow. yeah. that's when the city of Hampton was going from semester classes to nine-week courses. And we went into the nine-week program, and it, it was a scheduling headache oh, for the next four years. I can't imagine trying to what you guys were doing, because it was try, bad as a teacher. Try, that. Yes, trying to provide for the kids the classes that they needed. Right. And there were a couple of guidance individuals along the way that really helped bail us out. Okay. Very good. Uh, their, their help and expertise in the nine-week program was extremely helpful. There were times when we would have 22, 2300 kids scheduled into summer school. That's a lot of kids. That was a lot of kids. Wow. A lot of kids. Yeah. And that, uh, that nine-week program it just, it was very, very demanding on the, on the kids and on personnel. All right. So, yeah. Well, you got through that. Got through that. Went to Kickatan, went, went, but not activities in? No, I went into, I, uh, uh, Mr. Dyke asked me to come over as assistant principal for instruction. And I did. I was over there three years and uh, then made an application to change uh, and went over to Hampton High School. Okay. That was my old alma mater. Okay, and now let's second. You would kick a tan. Uh-huh. You was at Bethel. Uh-huh. You was at Pembroke. Uh-huh. You was at Hampton. Yeah. And later on, before I left the system, I went to Phoebus. So you, you're, the, you're the only guy I know of has been at the all five of the Hampton schools. I would Hampton High Schools. Yeah, I'm all of the all five of the Hampton High Schools. I I, I served some time. And then you was ended up a principal at Eaton. Uh, the last year <laughs> uh, when uh, when uh, Ashby Kilgore right. uh, accepted the job over at uh, Woodside, uh, they asked me to go to. They knew I was going to retire, so they asked me to go uh, over to. Uh, uh, Eaton Middle School for my for my last year, which I did, and it was it was a very pleasant experience, wow. very nice. Eaton is a is a fine middle school. All right, we're going to wrap this up, Bobby. But your message to youngsters about athletics and education. My message would be to get involved, not just with academics, because academics is essentially what they're there for. But there's so much else offered in the athletic programs and in the activity programs where they can uh, spread their wings, so to speak, and gain great new experiences and learn about other people as well. Very good. I appreciate you coming in. Well, Bobby, thank you very much for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank you for tuning in to LSC and Sports Time. I want to thank my special guest, Bobby Croft. 
I'm your host, Bob Hintz. Till next time.